Yeah. <clears throat> I think maybe the idea of like doing like karaoke for money would be fun thing to try sometime. It's an interesting concept. If we could find a good way to do it, that would be cool. Hi, guys. Eighty six Dana. Sweet and spicy. What's up? What's up? So, what I got for you today is pretty uh, straightforwardly a politics related video and message. And it cannot be ignored, the massive elephant that's in the room of the Republican Party, which is the party of the elephant. Because we never forget, conservatives never forget. So, there's a huge elephant in the middle of the Republican Party. And the way I like to describe it is Donald with his uh, Cheeto skin, neon orange visage and he's towing behind him by its little scrawny tail the elephant by the tail and that's the GOP and it's all on the back of Trump who's the cult leader well I ain't drinking nothing I'm drinking Red Bull okay Donald literally is carrying the elephant that's dead on his back and you could you could sort of uh, uh in symbols say that the physical representation of that would be Mitch McConnell when he's staring into the abyss and they ask him a question and they, they're like well, how how do you feel about running for your seat in 2026 and he goes I uh And then he had an event. Like he, he had, it's almost stroke like. So we're at an impasse in reality that's extremely bizarre. And you have Israel losing their shit at this point. Red Bull gives you the worst heartburn, not with me. I'm a imm I'm immune to the Red Bull heartburn for some reason. It gives me wings, but anyway, we're in some really weird, bizarre, hard to believe political reality in America right now. You have Joe Biden and this makes absolutely no sense. If we're going to go by the numbers that are given to us via the regular channels through the news media, then we are to believe that the economy is not only recovering, but it's, it's, it's ratcheting up our GDP to something like, I don't know, it was a 5% GDP increase, I think, which is, it's, un, it's unprecedented. And they had Trump saying... 2.5% growth GDP is very good and stable, which is true. That is. That's a very stable number. 4.9 is not a stable number. That's going to crash. Now, you have these pundits and people who write Democratic uh, policy papers that they're saying Bidenomics is working. And you can see it in the results in the states and in the federal revenues and everything. You can see how Bidenomics is actually plugging in money back into the system and it's churning out more productive social programs, uh, record people uh, on, on uh, getting off food stamps and coming into normal employment and uh, becoming tax-paying citizens into the system. That's what they say is happening that the middle class is getting the push up that they needed and the lower class is actually finally being able to get some ladders up on 
the side of the building and they can get people down off the roof of the burning building. Okay, metaphorically speaking. If your house is burning, you want to get out of it quick because it's you're going to die. So you got to get the hell out of the house that's burning. America is that house. Okay, it's going to burn down. The problem is, how are we going to do this evacuation? Is it going to be ruly? Is it going to be with respect of peoples, regardless of their race or creed or any of that stuff? Or is it going to be survival of the fittest social Darwinism, which will end in total and complete anarchy and the death of God and the state? And you're left with nothing, it, like Mad Max. You have a, a political climate with Donald Trump that's absolutely unprecedented in the history of the country. And we probably will never see anything like this ever again in this country. God willing. You have 35% of the people saying that Joe Biden is ineffective. His approval numbers, he's at 56% approval rating. That is absolutely disastrous. So what does that tell you about Joe Biden? That tells you that Joe Biden, there's all of this pro-Biden speech in the liberal media, but the results that people see do not add up to what the, the pundits on the TV are saying. The gas is at three seventy-three, four dollars $4 almost a gallon. Look at this Paul. The inflation has not been dealt with. And you cannot buy much for what you got in your pocket. You spend $90 in a matter of 15 minutes, folks. It's gone. This needs to stop. So the question is, is Joe Biden the guy to correct the issues that we face as a nation? He is a guy that has worked for banks his whole political life in the state of Delaware. The state of Delaware, their banking, it's all corporate banking, and he has been in that pocket forever from time and eternity. So does he want to solve the issues that we got with debt? I don't know. The question is, where are you going to put your one cent, your pence. That's what it's going to come down to. Because the by the looks of it, at 56% approval, you have a lame duck, absolutely do nothing president, which is really strange because he's had a lot of legislation that has been put through. It's very, the craziest, weirdest shit. There was no speaker. They went four weeks almost without a speaker. This is unheard of. All of this shit is unprecedented in the history of the nation. And it all comes down to one man, which is Trump, the cult leader. The, the, he's a literal cult of personality, um, mogul, fake, a used car, oil, a snake oil salesman that has been pushed up by a certain number of conservatives and liberals to be put in a place to look down on other people and go, well, I am your king and you shall call me Caesar. And they do. Here's the bottom line. If you, and you should share this with people like Midas Touch if you want to, I am a Republican. I voted Donald Trump in 2016, I did not vote for him in 2020. He lost me by then, George Floyd, okay? And he flipped the Bible upside down. That was it, I was done with him. He's a Mason, okay? June 1st, he flipped the Bible and they said, this is how it is. And he gassed, he, he blasted people with water cannons like a Nazi. Bill Barr looks like a boar, all right? <laughs> Mr. President, I think we should do this. Look at his face, folks. Trump can't find hungry on a map in another embarrassing moment live on stage. Look at this guy. This is a skin mask. 
Do you get what I'm saying? Max Headroom, skin mask. He's absolutely hideous. Look, he's, he's neon burnt orange. He's neon burnt orange. Look, the Republicans in the primary could try and do something. Under the 13th Amendment, or the, yes, under the 13th Amendment, uh, Section 3, Donald Trump is ineligible to run for the presidency. His candidacy is dead, done, non-existent, should not exist. He is not okay to run, period. We need to have the convention have real teeth, and we have to put somebody forward. I suggest Chris Christie. He's tough as shit. Uh, he is willing to stand up and say, this guy is lawless. He's an absolute sack of shit that we need to exile from American polit political life. Donald Trump is a cancer that needs to be removed from the American political system until it gets leukemia and then bone marrow cancer and die. No more MAGA, no more. That's it. And that I'm a Republican. That's it. You would send this to any liberal guys you want to, and they could use this, use it. Uh, Donald Trump's a cancer, and he's got to be put in jail. Uh, he has to have social media and his electronic devices taken and seized from him. And he needs to uh, spend his time paying for the crimes that he did against the republic that are uh, absolutely without uh, old school means of dealing with it. There's no punishment that is, uh, you, there's no punishment for what he did. The, the level of crime iniquity is off the chart. So that's it. You're condemned, weighed in the balances, uh, Book of Daniel stuff. Nebuchadnezzar, he's, you're out, you're a loser, and it's time to move on. Chris Christie, 2024. Peace out.